Good morning world. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. I'm so glad this video Yes. One sec. Nice. Let's try that again. Hello everyone, it's Jeff here bringing you another video from our Kenya adventures. Today we are exploring Lake Nakuru National Park. I'm so excited to be here. This is a place I've never been. This is my first time. This place is widely known for its prolific bird watching. There are millions of flamingos that flock here every year to nest and feed. So hopefully we can catch a glimpse of the flamboyances that flock here. A flamboyance, by the way, is what we call a flock of flamingos. The roof has been popped. We are now ready to go explore. There's Shelly back there. She's going to be joining us today. And uh, I'm excited to go check this out. So it costed $60 per person to be here for the day. That is how much it costs for a foreign adult to be here for 24 hours. So we paid this morning at 8 a.m., which means that is valid until tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, so if we wanted to do two nights here, we'd have to pay that twice. And the vehicle that we have is around $16 a day. So that was another cost we had. We are actually staying in the park at a place called the Flamingo Camp. I'll show you that later. Um, and because we are staying there overnight, we do have to pay for that time we are in the park. So I ended up spending 137 US dollars to be here for two nights to explore this park as much as I possibly can. I found that to be quite expensive. It's definitely on the higher end, especially for Kenya's national parks. $60 is how much it costs for every 24 hours, and the vehicle per day is 16, and then they charge me extra for paying with credit card. So that's how much it costed. Anyway, oh, Say hi to Shelly, everyone. Hi, Are you ready? Always ready. Time for another safari. Ta -da -da. Here we go. And a quick shout out to Gorilla Clock for getting us here safely. They are the best. We love our guide, Simon. He's such a homie. And he has been- He does everything for us. He does everything for us <laughs> We'd all. be like chicken with heads cut off without him. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you ever want to go with Gorilla Clock, I highly recommend it. Here's their info. <laughs> what do we hope to see today? We hope to see tons of birds. I want to see all the birds in my bird book. Where's my bird book? Bird book is... We need the bird book stat. <clears throat> so, in Lake Nakuru National Park, there are more than 400 bird species. This is my bird book that I got when I first arrived. There's only 268 bird species in this book. So hopefully we see all of this and even more. Some bird species I'm really hoping to see would include, of course, the lesser and greater flamingos. Those are different species that come here. I really want to see some jacanas. Those are the birds with really, really large feet and they're able to walk on lily pads. They are sometimes referred to as the Jesus bird because they walk on water. I also want to see tons of hammer cops. I mean, you can never get enough of them, right? We're hoping to see tons of great white pelicans, which is one of the largest species of pelicans. Might even be the largest. I'll have to check on that. I've never seen a wider bird. I'm not really sure if this is the right place to look for them, but if we do see one, I'm gonna be stoked. We saw some ibises at breakfast this morning. And as far as birds of prey, I mean, all of them. Vultures, eagles, owls, fishing eagles. You see flamingos? Yeah! That was fast! I think those are tree stumps. <laughs> no! Yes. No! No, they're tree stumps! <laughs> no! <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> We're eager for flamingos. <laughs> Shelly and I are desperate for flamingos. We are staying at the flamingo camp. Like we have a lot of money to see flamingos. <laughs> I'm paying like one dollar per flamingo <laughs> that we're seeing. Oh, look how lush it is. Everything's so green. I see some animals speckled in the grassland. So there's a very fine line drawn between the urbanization that is the city of Nakuru and the national park. You see this book here is the key to everything. We have spotted a new bird species. It's a northern buzzard. I'm gonna just hyper zoom on this camera to see if I can pick it up. Do you see it up in the tree? That little dot? So that is what we're looking at in the tree. Auger buzzard. Auger buzzard, check. Look at all this interspecies interaction. Zebra. Some warthog piglets. All in formation. And a quick shout out to the impala. A troop. Mm -hmm. 
Anyone else just slightly afraid of them? Yeah. It's so green here. We are looking at vervet monkeys, which are sometimes called green monkeys. I mean, you can find these monkeys pretty much anywhere in Kenya. They are at all the national parks I have ever visited. They uh, sometimes are pests, but sometimes when you find them cutely cuddled with their young ones, they're just adorable. Okay, on the road. I'm enjoying the sunlight of juveniles. So the bird we just saw is called a hoopoo and they are actually, they feed on the ground. They eat primarily insects. They have a beautiful crown on their head and they have a similar body structure to woodpeckers. We have some Egyptian geese. And do you see those two birds flying out there? Those are African fish eagles. Oh, three of them. And it looks like they're on the hunt. Let's just take a moment and enjoy this beautiful scenery. This place is full of color. Wow. So Lake Nakuru for the last decade has been experiencing rising water levels. And right now the waters are so high that it's actually flooded the original main gate. And this flooded about eight to nine years ago. And if you look at the trees along the coastline, they are essentially drowning. So that's why the shoreline is now ringed with Kind of a spooky, eerie tree cemetery. I think they flew away, but that's okay. And this is actually one of the reasons why the flamingos haven't been here as much as they used to be. Uh, the rising water levels create deeper water, less desirable for the flamingos, so they've been flocking elsewhere throughout Kenya. But in recent years, only did they start to come back. And this is because the surrounding lakes that they were flocking to were also flooding. So <laughs> they just had to adapt to the deeper water. That's a little bit about this visual here. All right, we've definitely found flamingos. Look at this. So we've got a huge group of great white pelicans here and a giant cloud of pink flamingos. These look like lesser flamingos. So I was just learning about why there's so many flamingos here and that is because there's really healthy alkalinity in this lake which is just a high concentration of dissolved salts that help maintain the pH levels. Rather than fluctuating pH levels, it's a lot much more constant because of this high salt concentration and therefore lots of organic life is able to survive. And it's this organic life that includes algae and insect larvae that flamingos feed on. And that's why there are so many flamingos and not just flamingos, but just tons of birds. There is the spoonbill, defined of course by its spoon-like bill. These are the yellow-billed storks because, of course, they have yellow bills. So there are two types of flamingos you can spot here, the greater flamingo and the lesser flamingo. Most of the flamingos we're seeing right now in this giant flamboyance, they are lesser flamingos. They have like a darker pink plumage. So when they feed in the water, they just like dip their beaks in and filter that top layer, whereas greater flamingos do much more of a deeper mud dive. You can actually sometimes tell which species it is just based on how far their head is submerged in the water. And of course, their size is quite different. Lesser flamingos are a bit smaller and greater flamingos are a little bit greater. Here they come. Wow, this is dazzling. Bye. We are now watching the great white pelicans soar above in these beautiful, beautiful formations. We are definitely enjoying this slice mm -hmm. of paradise. I never want to leave. All right, so we have found a southern white rhinoceros, two of them, and yeah, here they come. What's so cool about this view right now is I'm just gazing over the horizon and I see so many different species. I see warthogs, ostriches, zebras, rhinos, 
what else? I mean, gazelles, gazelles impala, yeah. pelicans. There's so much to take in. There's so mm. much to look at. All right, everyone, you're going to get another little bit of trivia, rhino trivia that you didn't ask for. So what is the difference between a black and white rhinoceros? Shelly, do you remember after I told you all about them in Old Bajetta? Well, let, let me remind no, let me tell you. Oh. The black rhinos are more aggressive in disposition. White rhinos have a calmer disposition. Um, white rhinos have the square mouth. Yes, yes, they have a square lip and the black rhino have a pointed lip. Mm -hmm. And why is that, Shelly? I don't know. <laughs> it's because white rhinos are grazers, so their heads hang lower to the ground and they feed more on grass. And black rhinos have the pointed lip with kind of a prehensile gripping ability to browse taller vegetation in bushes. This one is for my bird nerds out there. We just saw the paradise white which is such a cool bird. I need to find a picture for you. They have, they have super long tails. Good thing I have this. I've never seen before. Who's this fella? Oh, that is so cool. So how's everyone enjoying this video so far? Are you enjoying Lake Nakuru? Are you having fun? The best time. Did you enjoy all the little fun facts about birds and rhinos I've been giving you? Do you oh. want less? Do you want more? All right, our next wildlife spotting is none other than a Rothschild giraffe. This is actually a bigger deal than it sounds because this is one of the most endangered species of giraffes there is. So see how they kind of have white socks? All right, we have arrived to a waterfall. Whoa. All right, so this is kind of a muddy looking waterfall. I'm not sure if I want to go swim in that particularly. It kind of reminds me of the Chocolate River from Willy Wonka. <laughs> the Cape Buffalo are always looking for attention, but I don't want to give them <laughs> Sorry, but we're more interested in the giraffes. We have spotted eight Rothschild giraffes. Who's ready for another giraffe fact? Me. A group of giraffes is called a tower. Did you know that giraffes have some of the highest blood pressure of any other mammal species? No, I didn't. And you know why? It's because they have to pump all that blood all the way to the top of their necks. And that's Whoa. like, I know, that's like three meters. <laughs> okay, we'll give you attention because you're sitting in a mud bath. Hi. Oh, a little bit more action. Wow. <laughs> we have just stopped to admire this view. You can see the lake, all of the greenery that we just drove through. We're back with the flamingos to get one last look before we leave. They are still chilling. <laughs> A dung beetle rolling a piece of dung. Goodbye, Lake Nakuru. Nope. I'm now going to show you guys our camp because I know all of you are just extremely nosy about all of our business and want to know every detail about our trip. So, we are staying at the Flamingo Hill Camp. It's located in the National Park. What a perk. And uh, we're here for two nights, so let's go check it out. Hello, welcome area. Hello, Path. Hello, Shelly. Hello. That was quite an exhausting game drive. Oh, too? Yeah, I think it's because it's day 10 of sunrise streak. <laughs> I haven't I missed a sunrise yet. Ooh, tropical features. Lounge. Lunch. Mm -hmm. Dessert. Huh, I wonder why this stopped flowing. We are in the pool area. It's very calming out here. Ooh, should I go in the pool? Well, look at this nice lawn overlooking Lake Nakuru National Park. I can see some Cape Buffalo and some warthogs. All right, and we're coming in on our 
tent. Ooh, we have a nice little patio, which maybe we should use. Da -da -da. Ah, this is our massive bed. And this is our bathroom. That's me in the mirror. We've got a big shower over here. And that's our room. Oh, hi, Shelly. Hey. Hello, Nakuru. We've got some ibises here. This is so peaceful. I'm the only one here. I'm the only one sitting here. Shelly is back at the tent having a quick shower. I'm just enjoying the late afternoon sun, watching some Cape Buffalo and Warthog roam past. I'm just feeling good right now, you know? Just feeling good. Uno. Is it time for Uno? Yes. Okay, be right there. Pick up two. And I go first. I crush you. No, I, well, the last game. But I crush you first. I'm changing the color to red and then I skip you again. I win. It's, you can't play a two Yeah, on. I can. It's skip your turn and then it's my turn. That's blue. Yeah, but I can still skip you and go back to changing it to red. Seven. I'm skipping you, I'm skipping you, and I'm plus twoing you. Rude! One, two. Yay. Double two. I'm so Double restless. Two. Do you want to tell them who just crushed you at Uno, or do you want me to tell them? I'm busy right now, you're interrupting me. Wow. The sky is magnificent. <laughs> we <Woo! laughs> love it here. <laughs> Run into the sun. <laughs> well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this fun day in Lake Nakuru National mm -hmm. Park. We sure had fun. The best time. The best time. If you want to follow us along on more Kenya adventures, mm -hmm. don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn more about ecotourism and hear some conservation stories along the way, that's another reason why you should subscribe. Anyway, thanks for following Stay along. Tuned. Stay tuned. Until holla. next Until next time. Holla. <laughs> holla. When have we ever said holla? Holla. Bow wow. <laughs>